you'll also feel rather more than that. There are some just plain upsetting parts in the game, and some very, very nasty moments. Luckily, these moments aren't reveled in at all, merely presented for what they are, unpleasant moments that make you feel uncomfortable because they are uncomfortable. Or the sections that make you so tense that it's only when the scene ends that you realise your whole upper body is tensed up. Wonderful. You still have four miles to go before you reach your Despite being so down-to-earth and human, this doesn't mean they can't have some fun sci-fi element in a game. Although Heavy Rain is extremely light in this regard, it is worth talking about. The ARI system is a means of examining and analysing your environment, utilising a vast database of information, and is one of the little things one of the characters in the game is able to do, but in augmented reality, and complements one or two insanity effect type moments in the game. What you see on the screen is, albeit very rarely, not what may actually be happening to the people in the story. The sci-fi sleuthing element is a cool, effective and much needed break in the emotionally exhausting ups and downs of the game. Gameplay-wise, you interact with the game with a quite interesting fluid control system which changes and modifies itself in context with where you are, what you're doing, and the stress levels you are under. For example, the quarter circle on the right stick motion is used for things like opening doors, or getting something from your pocket. The game prompts where you can use these, although there is at least one action you can use that doesn't prompt you. And these are a flat icon embedded in the 3D world. During a different sequence, it might be to shift your arm up to another handhold, but because you're stressed out, it will shake and jitter, becoming less clear. Some buttons are pretty fixed in function. L2 is usually for thinking, where a character will give their thought monologue, and R2 is normally for forward movement. Thinking and forward movement are never any other button, so when there's no prompt, that's what they do. R2 for walk is just so you don't suddenly change direction due to the camera. It takes a lot of getting used to, to not have to constantly point the left stick in the direction you want to go. Uh, there are also quite a lot of quick time events, so if, uh, like many gamers, you have an irrational hate erection for timed button presses, then you should probably stop gaming since pretty much every game you've played has a timed button sequence in it somewhere. Even incredibly sophisticated control schemes like Modern Warfare 2's Press A to Shoot Man. I mean, you may want to avoid heavy rain. Really though, there's, there's nothing wrong with quick time events, especially when they lend themselves to the action. They don't do most of the things that people hate about them. For example, missing one doesn't make you fail, nor does it make you do the entire sequence again. Also, the first few sequences of keys are, are generally unimportant if you're given no warning, so, you know, you either know when they're coming, or it won't change a huge portion of the story if you miss the first couple. You may, however, get a little more beaten up. Private. Oh. Cool, baby. Yeah, come with me. <laughs> Everything is gonna be all right. I have a plan. I know exactly what I'm doing. This guy is truly revolting. Ugh. This is no time to get squeamish. Even if my legs do feel like they're about to give away. There are some minor problems with the control scheme, however. Uh, sometimes it's a little difficult to differentiate betwixt square and circle, and you'll miss the one you want. Not intentionally, like when you're stressed, but purely because you've picked the wrong camera angle and it's quite small on the screen. I'd have also liked to have seen colour in the on-screen button displays to match the colours on the controller. These could have met the saturation level on the screen to not spoil the atmosphere. They could have inverted the text when you need to hold rather than press a button, and this would have made it instantly obvious what you do, rather than have a small triangle on the top of the button. One thing the control system does help get rid of is any sort of hood, leaving our viewport into the world that much clearer. Everything tends to lend itself to the atmosphere since it's such a large portion of the game's charm. 
It's also quite nice to not have to directly micromanage aspects of what the characters do in regards to controls. They'll do things on their own. On the other hand, some of the things they don't do on their own is sometimes a little confusing. For example, you do get to do quite mundane things like shave and put pants on. The first time through though, this isn't so bad, it does help immerse you in the story, but it feels a little pointless. A lot of the sequences in the game are wonderfully non-linear, but others can be relatively dull, where you're given pretty explicit direction and not much in the way of extraneous stuff you can accomplish. Luckily this is for small sections of the whole. Generally there are so many options that you won't discover them all for several playthroughs, possibly not even until someone just tells you the things they did and you realise you'd never even thought of trying it. Personally I love it just for that, it'll drive me pleasantly crazy trying to get all of the little extra actions acted and thoughts thunk. The story can be twung very far in several directions all at once, so you never have to worry if you're going to somehow break the game, and you get lots of chances to redo vast arrays of actions in different orders and at different times, with just enough that last minute dodges to keep you on your toes and really enjoying yourself. It's also nice to see a game not just the use the extra space on a Blu-ray to have higher quality pre-rendered cutscenes. Heavy Rain has precisely zero. When your in-game engine looks this good, frankly, you don't need to. You're better off using the extra space for more art and general content. So a lot of the extras are just concept art stills, but they give you a look into how they thought the game out, very well as it turns out, and there are some short making of type movies which are very well done and answer all the questions you'd have about making the game. They all open up once they no longer spoil the game. I can only hope more DLC comes out in the form of Chronicles added to the game, as one of the flaws of Heavy Rain is that it isn't as compelling the second time around, even if you do do things differently. The feature allowing you to restart the story from a chapter helps, but it would have also helped to allow players to skip speech they'd already heard, a small concession to make it more of a gamer's game. But this is a must-play gaming experience, and games are rarely this special. Over 100 suspects interrogated. Not a single lead to go on. <laughs> 